Shaquille Madjuri here for MMA Mania with Derek Brunson back in action, looking to continue his winning ways. Absolutely. Derek, we talked about this off camera, but are you upset with me for asking you about your cheerleading career last time? No, I'm not upset, you know, but if you consider hitting a man across the head with a baseball uh, bat upset, maybe I'm a little upset, you know, but no, I'm not upset. Oh, man, me too. Um, I love that, you know, it was, for those of you, there were people online who were like, why would you do that? I'm like, it's a legit question, dude. It's athletic. It's a serious career. People do it. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, it's relevant. It's relevant. You know? yeah, Flexibility, yeah. stability, and also, man, like, you have to work with the girls all the time. Absolutely, bro. Ladies. Now, I have to ask, I saw you post a really funny Instagram photo of, like, a... Uh, Dana White aging through the years. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is it about Dana White's bald head where all of his fighters feel so compelled to make fun of him? Dana White's just Dana White, you know? Dana White always talking, always uh, being in the spotlight. So, hey, anytime we can get the boss, man, we got to get him, you know? Um, people have, you know, different fighters have very different relationships with Dana, but do you find him to be kind of like an, an approachable boss when you are working for him at the UFC? Absolutely. I walked through the double doors and like the first person he dap up was me, you know. Uh, I think he appreciates me, you know, I come out here and fight. I've been in the UFC for about seven years. It's my 16th fight. Um, always make weight, don't fail drug tests, and you put they put me in matchups and, and I show up, you know, so... You know, you, you gotta appreciate a fighter like that. I think he's, I think he's, he's for sure a, a good guy, and a, he's a businessman. You know. Now you've got this fight, UFC 241 Saturday versus Ian Heinish. Ian's been talking a lot, man. Not nothing you're not used to. Uh, what I think is most compelling is he says something that a lot of your past opponents have said. Elias said it. Other people said that he's gonna get you flustered and emotional, and then you're gonna go out there swinging like you have in earlier stages of your career. Um, I think you showed in that Elias fight that you know how to stay composed in the cage. How do you get there? How do you learn to sort of turn off that switch that makes you go crazy? Because a lot of fighters struggle with it. It's just about uh, keeping your composure, practicing it, training it. But here's the thing, is that me swinging and going crazy, that's not good for my opponent either. You know, that's only failed me a, a, a few times. But it, it, it got me a lot of knockouts doing so. So, you know, that's not really a bad strategy, but I think the more composed and more safer and fight-oriented martial arts showing skill approaches to really take your time, go out there and stay composed and um, practice what you've been practicing. Don't go out there like a wild man looking to finish the fight, you know, just like that. You've had these great pushes up the rankings, always flirting with title contention. You know, you've had some losses and key fights. What feels different this time on your route back to a title shot? It just feels like, you know, I'm, I'm in the right place at the right time, you know. Uh, I've been there, I've done that. I tried this, I tried that. And I know what it takes and I know what I need to do to in order to put myself in a prime position. Let's talk a little bit about the division. Uh, we talked about your last fight, Elias Theodoru. What are your thoughts on him getting cut? Because it was brief, but there was a while where a lot of people were like, some people were like, bye. Yeah. Other guys were like, you know what? He had a great record inside the octagon. Your loss, to, uh, your his loss to you aside, what did you make of him getting cut? Um, yeah, when when something like that happens, we know it's just not off one performance. It was other stuff. You know, we see it all the time, but it just came at an unfortunate time. But um, yeah, it was some other. Uh, underlying issues that he had with the UFC, I'm sure, you know, who knows, it is what it is. Um, hey, I guess you got to have better relationships with uh, the people you work for, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. You also talked recently about Heinish's last opponent, Antonio Carlos Jr. What you said was Heinish didn't so much beat him as Shoeface kind of beat himself in that fight. Yeah. Antonio Carlos Jr., someone who a lot of people were looking at as a potential breakout star. What do you think is the key thing in his game that he needs to address and fix moving forward? Uh, he's just, he has to be a little bit more durable, a little bit more tough. Um, whereas I made mistakes in some fights, I tried to go heavy with the wrestling or heavy with the strikes. You got to find that balance. Antonio Carlos got to find the balance in his game. Uh, 
with his grappling. He's a superior grappler. And he's like one of the best grapplers in the whole MMA community, you know. And I think he relies on it too much where it's like, okay, buddy, you got to tone it down and strike a little bit. You can't just go grapple because people know it, it's coming, you know. And that was one of his demises. He just wasted too much energy doing so. Uh, in the fight with Dan Kelly, we had a common opponent. I was able to finish him in the first round. Shoeface fought him, was beating him th through two rounds, and then faded and got TKO'd in the third. It's just, you know, same thing. He should have easily won that fight, you know, but just too much uh, grapple heavy, you know. Did you happen, I know obviously in fight week you've got immediate things to focus on. Did you happen to catch any of that Adesanya Whitaker press conference that occurred on Wednesday? No, I didn't. I saw, like, probably, like, two, like, uh, gifts and they stare down and but that's about it I, I didn't really get to catch much of it you know during fight week i don't really uh get on social media i kind of stay off social media focus on the fight play some video games and that's that the uh the the fans in australia were tearing into israel adesanya oh really yeah, yeah it was and you know what I, I, he held his own he would call people back like the would be trying to get rid of people he'd drag them back in to talk s back at them but I'll say it's the first time he looked a little flustered, so I'd love to, I'd love to get your breakdown of his exchange with the fans. It's kind of crazy. He threw out some bad words. Uh, as we wrap up, I'm not going to ask you about your prediction on the outcome. I'm sure you're going to hear that later today if you haven't already. But what's the post-fight celebration looking like after the after party? Just going to hang out with the friends and family? What are you doing after to celebrate? Um, yeah, hang out with the friends and family, hang out with the fiancé. Just, just enjoy it. You know, this is a journey, you know, and uh, I learned to enjoy every part of it and just keep the momentum going forward, you know? All right, Derek, my man, best of luck. I thank, thank you. you for that, and I look forward to next time we can chat, bro. Absolutely.